Amber moved to a big new house with her parents. It had a beautiful garden with different parts to it. In one of those parts, Amber found a strange-looking statue. It almost looked human-like. Strange things started to happen as soon as they moved in. And when Amber finally realized what was going on, she called the police. And it was a good thing she did. Strange things were happening inside the house. Things would disappear and suddenly show up in a whole different place. Amber and her parents were baffled by this, but they would soon find out the truth. Amber walked toward the statue. Something about it was out of the ordinary, but she couldn't tell what it was. Maybe because of all these weird bumps? But she would soon find out what it was. She brushed her hand over the statue and felt the structure of the bumps on her palm. Why was she so drawn to this statue? And was it connected to the weird things happening inside the house? There is only one way to find out. Amber was always a curious and adventurous young girl. She loved exploring and discovering new things, especially in the big garden of the Victorian house that she and her parents were visiting. The house was beautiful, with its tall windows and intricate architectural details, and Amber couldn't wait to explore every nook and cranny of it. She walked through the door with her parents, Derek and Gabby, by her side, but before they could intervene, she was gone. She ran down the long hallways, leaving her parents behind in the entry hall. She heard their shouts to come back, fade away in her own laughter as she ran up the stairs. The old wooden floors creaked as she walked through every room. The rooms were beautiful, and unlike anything she had ever seen before. She thought she was in the most beautiful place ever. But then she noticed something. Outside, she saw a perfect blue sky, which made her little eight-year-old mind curious. She climbed up a chair and looked out the window. Her mouth dropped as she took in the most beautiful garden she had ever seen. She immediately jumped off the chair and wanted to run downstairs, but she noticed she was lost. She didn't remember which way she came from, and it started to freak her out. Amber frantically called for her parents and started to cry. Did they leave her behind? Why weren't they coming to her rescue? She sat down on the ground and kept crying until she heard footsteps from behind. She turned around and was greeted with a comforting smile. But it wasn't from her parents. An old lady walked to her and reached out her hand. Amber took it, and together they walked back through the long hallways. They didn't say a word to each other, but Amber felt safe in a way. Amber was reunited with her parents and wanted to thank the lady, but when she turned around, she was gone. Mom? I saw the most beautiful garden outside. Can I go and play? Amber asked her mother. Of course, darling, but don't go too far. I want to be able to see you. Amber nodded her head and ran outside. The garden was huge, with multiple fountains and flower beds. But that wasn't all. There was a part of the garden on the left side that looked different than the rest. It had archways of dried-out flowers reaching high over the pebble path and a little greenhouse at the end. A large tree stood next to the house and cast a big shadow over that part of the garden. Amber got an eerie feeling when she looked at the little greenhouse, but she also felt intrigued to explore. What if other treasures or mysteries were on that side of the garden? Her little mind started racing with different theories, and before she knew it, she walked toward the greenhouse. She knew her parents wouldn't be able to see her on this side of the garden, but her curiosity got to her. She walked slowly, taking everything in when she saw something from the corner of her eye. She took a few steps back and looked at the scary object with big eyes. Amber wanted to yell for her mother, but she froze. The object looked like a human crouched down with his head on his knees. Amber ran away and hid behind a tree. She peered her head from behind the tree 
to see if the person would move, but it didn't. She slowly emerged from behind the tree and walked toward the human. She hesitantly looked at it from a distance and noticed the person was covered in bumps. Was it sick? She reached her hand out to touch one of the bumps when she suddenly heard her mother yell for her. She quickly pulled her arm back and turned around. Her mother was already running toward her. Don't touch that, honey. Get away from there. Amber quickly stepped back with a startled look on her face. Why was her mother so scared for her to touch this person? Was it even a person? Amber's mother, Gabby, grabbed Amber by the arm and pulled her backward. I told you not to go out of sight, she said strictly. What is wrong with this person, Mama? Amber asked. This isn't a person, Amber. It's a statue and not an ordinary one. I don't want you back here anymore. Amber was confused by her mother's worry, but she obliged. Her mother's demeanor shifted instantly as they walked back. Do you like the house? We're going to buy it. Amber looked at her mother with a big smile on her face. She loved the house and especially the garden. But that would soon change. A few weeks passed, and Amber and her family moved into the house. During these past weeks apart, she couldn't stop thinking about the scary statue in the garden and her mother's strange reaction to it. But now she had all the time to study and play with it. Or so she thought. As soon as they were all unpacked, Amber ran straight to the statue. But to her surprise, the statue was gone. She could have sworn it should be here, but there was an empty spot on the grass. She looked all over the garden and even inside the scary shed, but it was nowhere to be found. Amber expected her mother had removed the statue because of her strange reaction to it. So she went inside and got on with her day. In the evening, as her mother tucked her in, she asked about the statue and why her mother reacted that way. But her mother's answer was even more confusing. Her mother seemed a bit irritated by her daughter's question and quickly got up. She kissed Amber on her forehead and wished her good night. Amber asked if she could keep the door slightly open so the light would fall in, so she did as Amber asked. But Amber would later regret her decision. It was almost 3 a.m. at night, and a strange sound suddenly awoke Amber. She looked at the little beam of light that suddenly disappeared. Did someone just pass by her door? Amber's heart was pounding in her chest. Mom, is that you? She hesitantly asked, but there was no response. Amber always had an intuition for the peculiar. The statue, though mere stone and moss, unsettled her. Every morning, she'd gaze out the window, its silhouette haunting her view. Wasn't it closer to the tree yesterday? She whispered. But statues don't move, right? Each day, a gnawing suspicion grew. Was the statue playing tricks on her, or was it her imagination? At breakfast, her voice trembled. The statue! It's moving, I swear! Her mother, sipping coffee, smiled kindly. New houses have their quirks, dear. Her father chuckled. Maybe it's the garden wanderer ghost coming to greet us. Her brother snickered. Or maybe it's just your wild imagination again. Amber felt isolated, her concerns dismissed, and the unfamiliar surroundings amplified her anxiety. Taking a walk to escape the stifling atmosphere, Amber came across an elderly couple, tending to roses next door. Hello, dear. New to the neighborhood? The woman inquired. Amber nodded. Yes, just moved in. The man, with silver hair and wise eyes, remarked, Ah, the house with the fascinating history. Curiosity peaked. Amber wanted to know more. Over cups of tea, the neighbors delved into stories, shadows of the past intertwined with the present. Decades ago, the old woman began, People claimed a statue-like figure roamed the gardens during full moons. 
old tales, the man sighed, but they do add charm. Amber's eyes widened, her internal fears mirrored in a whispered community legend. Haunted by the narratives, Amber knew she couldn't let this mystery go unsolved. Driven by a mix of fear and fascination, she decided to dig deeper. If there's any truth to these tales, she thought, I need to find it. Armed with a notebook and determination, she set off, seeking more clues about this eerie figure that seemed so intertwined with her new home. Amber found herself in the dimly lit local library, surrounded by shelves creaking with age. Shuffling through yellowing newspapers, her fingers stumbled upon a series of clippings. Unexplained garden phenomena, one headline read. As she skimmed, patterns emerged, tales of a garden statue that seemed to shift, all eerily similar to her own experiences. One article particularly caught her eye. Mystery of the Statue Man Persists. The piece dated back to the Victorian era, detailing how residents were unnerved by a statue-like presence that shifted positions, especially during specific lunar phases. Full Moon's Silent Wanderer, it was labeled. Amber's heartbeat quickened. The past seemed to be mirroring the present. Drawing out a lunar calendar from the library, Amber started marking dates. Comparing the article's dates with the phases of the moon, a correlation became clear. On nights leading to and during the full moon, the statue was most active. Amber felt chills run down her spine. The garden's eerie occupant was bound to lunar movements. Eager to share her discoveries, Amber raced home. Mom, Dad, you won't believe what I found, she exclaimed. Laying out the clippings and her lunar calendar, she detailed her theory. But her parents exchanged weary glances. Honey, these are just old wives' tales, her mother said dismissively. Disheartened but not defeated, Amber realized she needed irrefutable evidence. Late at night, Amber set up a motion-activated camera, pointing directly at the statue's usual spot. If it moves again, she thought, I'll have my proof. She settled into bed, a mix of anticipation and trepidation filling her dreams. This silent vigil would be the key to either validating her fears or putting them to rest. Amber lay in her bed, the minutes ticking by like hours. Every sound, every gust of wind outside made her heart race. Would the statue move? Shadows played tricks on her mind as she strained to hear any signs of life from the garden. Her thoughts swirled, bouncing between hope, dread, and the weight of uncertainty. The following day, after what felt like an eternity, Amber reviewed the camera footage. Fast-forwarding through hours of stillness, she paused. There, a shadowy figure moved subtly, gracefully, amongst the garden's foliage. Amber's breath caught in her throat. The camera had captured the undeniable movement of the mysterious statue. Clutching the footage, Amber sought out Jake, her oldest and most trusted friend. You need to see this, she whispered, pressing play. As the shadowy figure danced across the screen, Amber's excitement was palpable. I knew it, she exclaimed. Jake's eyes widened in disbelief. What are you going to do? he asked, his voice trembling. Jake initially brushed it off. Maybe it's just an optical illusion, he mused. But Amber's conviction was unwavering. After repeated viewings and her earnest appeal, Jake's skepticism waned. All right, he said with a determined look. Let's get to the bottom of this. Together. Amber sighed in relief. She wasn't alone in her quest. Together, they devised a plan. Transforming the old garden shed into their base, they stockpiled it with essentials. Torchlights, snacks, a two-way radio, and blankets. Ensuring they had a clear view of the statue's usual spot, they settled in as dusk fell. 
prepared for the long haul, they were determined to witness the statue's mysterious wanderings firsthand. With the sun fully set, the garden was a silhouette of muted shapes and shadows. Jake and Amber sat shoulder to shoulder, the hum of anticipation palpable. They communicated in hushed whispers, as if the very act of speaking too loudly would shatter the fragile veil of the evening. Every rustle, every breeze ratcheting up the tension. The stakeout had begun. As the hours wore on, the initial adrenaline began to fade. The only movements were the occasional moths flitting past their hideout. Doubt crept in, and Jake's foot tapped impatiently against the shed floor. Maybe it was just a one-off, Amber pondered aloud, her voice betraying her mounting frustration. Hope waned, replaced by a slow, nagging uncertainty. Seeking to distract from the disappointment, Jake hesitated, then began, You know... This isn't the first time I've tried to chase down the unknown. Amber turned to him, intrigued. He spoke of an old family home, of corridors whispered to be haunted, and of nights spent seeking specters as a child. It wasn't just about the thrill. It was a quest for understanding. The shared story drew them closer in the dim light. They were on the brink of calling it a night when a soft sound floated in. A scraping? A shuffling? They exchanged wide-eyed glances. Jake motioned for silence, his earlier skepticism forgotten. Every sense heightened. They tuned into the garden's nocturnal symphony, trying to locate the source of the unsettling noise. There it stood, bathed in the soft glow of the moon, the statue. It was as still as ever, yet the feeling in the air had shifted. Both felt it. Their gaze remained unblinking, locked onto the figure. Time seemed to stand still. Was it the wind playing tricks, or was the statue truly on the brink of revealing its secrets? The moment was charged with expectation. There it was, almost imperceptible at first, the statue's slight tilt. Its shadow shifted, elongating and then shortening. The garden's stillness was disrupted as the statue's position morphed. No longer facing its original direction, it now eerily seemed to be inching closer to the house. The weight of what they were witnessing pressed down on Jake and Amber, making the night air feel even colder. From their vantage point, they observed the once stationary figure animate. As it moved out of the shadows, it became clear. The rigid lines of the statue softened, revealing the unmistakable form of a man. They clutched each other, barely able to contain their shock. All the stories, the whispers of the past, were converging into this singular, heart-pounding moment. As the figure continued its stealthy approach toward the house, a million thoughts raced through their minds. Do they confront this intruder or dial for help? The garden's stillness was now juxtaposed with the storm of indecision inside the shed. We need to do something, Jake whispered, his voice urgent. And fast. Amber, her fingers trembling, dialed the police, whispering the situation. But she knew the response might not be immediate. We need a backup plan, she said, her mind racing. Something to slow him down. They plotted to trigger the garden lights and perhaps set off the car alarm. Anything to deter his escape and alert the household without directly confronting the dangerous enigma. The duo moved with careful precision. Amber slid open a window, allowing Jake to reach and activate the garden lights. They burst on, momentarily blinding them. Simultaneously, Amber dropped a glass vase from an upstairs window, causing a crashing sound. They hoped this would wake her parents without letting on that there was a potential threat, giving them the advantage of surprise. The garden was now a stage, and every second counted. Amidst the tension-filled darkness, a hushed quiet was persistently interrupted by muffled sounds from inside the house. Distinct echoes of footsteps, 
hasty shuffling of items, and creaks from floorboards were unmistakable. Amber and Jake exchanged urgent glances, confirming their worst fears. The intruder's presence inside was not just a mere suspicion, but now a chilling reality, as they could clearly hear his movements. A sudden illumination from an upstairs window caught their attention. As Amber envisioned her parents stirring, her heart raced faster than before. Whispers slowly turned to louder voices as her parents tried to process the unusual disturbances. The weight of the situation became more palpable, and Amber's concerns grew for her unprepared and unsuspecting family, who had just realized that they weren't alone. Far in the distance, a faint wail of sirens pierced the night, growing steadily louder and more pronounced. An evident urgency permeated the atmosphere. The intruder's movements became more frantic, darting between rooms, likely seeking an escape. To Amber and Jake, who watched intently, the sound of those sirens felt like the promise of an impending resolution to a night filled with fear. The quiet garden was suddenly alive with action as police officers swarmed in. Their torchlights cut through the darkness, casting long, eerie shadows. Loud commands echoed through the night. Doors were audibly forced open, and the once peaceful house was now the center of intense activity. As events unfolded rapidly, the thief was finally cornered, and the mystery that had cast its shadow for so long was about to be revealed. The man, once believed to be a statue, was dragged into the piercing light. To everyone's shock, under layers of expertly crafted disguise, the familiar face of a man stared back. It was a moment of realization. The tales, eerie occurrences, and legend all fell into place in a narrative that was both chilling and astonishing. As dawn broke, the community was abuzz. Neighbors, in hushed tones, exchanged tales, connecting past stories with last night's revelation. The myth of the statue wasn't just a mere story. It had roots in truth, a truth that had been hiding in plain sight. The legend had come alive, proving that sometimes reality is stranger than fiction. Details emerged as the police pieced together the history of the intruder. He was an artist in crime, using theatrical disguises to execute heists, evading law enforcement for years. His method of blending into surroundings, observing his victims, and striking with uncanny precision made him notorious. The statue act, however, was his masterpiece, and his audacity had nearly granted him success. The tale of that fateful night spread throughout the town. Newspapers ran features on Amber and Jake, commending their bravery. Their journey from being mere curious teenagers to the town's heroes was celebrated with an appreciation event. Their courage had not only unveiled a mystery, but had also ensured the safety of many. Amber's parents, with eyes brimming with tears, pulled her into a heartfelt embrace. We should have believed you, her father whispered, his voice filled with remorse. Their living room was filled with an emotional atmosphere as trust was rebuilt, apologies were accepted, and bonds were fortified. It was a moment of familial healing and understanding. With the intruder apprehended and the mystery unveiled, the house slowly returned to its status as a sanctuary. Laughter and joy replaced fear, and the family grew even closer. Tales of the statue man would be recounted for years, serving as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the importance of trust and instincts.